This is the Woodland Edition of Toyota's very popular Sienna minivan. Does it have what it takes to climb a small mountain? We're going to find out right now on Driving Sports TV. The fourth generation of Toyota's Sienna minivan was introduced just three years ago. This is, of course, a great option for families that need three rows of seating, plus enough cargo to last a weekend. The Sienna competes against the Honda Odyssey, Chrysler Pacifica, and the all-new Kia Carnival. These are three very competitive options that are loaded with tech and offer standard as well as electrified powertrains. The Sienna we're looking at today is the XLE Woodland with all-wheel drive. This takes the XLE trim and adds 0.6 inches of extra ground clearance. But for some reason, they just include all-season radials on this vehicle. The RAV4 Woodland, it comes with mild all-terrains. I really expected to see those here. All-terrain tires, even modest ones, should be a must. This also includes Softex synthetic leather, a tow package for up to 3,500 pounds, and the old crusty Toyota infotainment system, which here in 2023 is well past its expiration date. Prices you see it here, including a truly terrible optional second row entertainment system, 50,829 US dollars, including destination. And by terrible, I really mean it. To get video into the system, you can either use an HDMI input or some app I've never been able to get to work right. You would do better to take 1,415 US dollars and just throw it into the street. Meanwhile, over on the Honda Odyssey, they're streaming PBS Kids over the internet. And in Chrysler Town, you get a separate screen with Amazon Fire integration. Hey, Toyota, the 1990s called, they want their entertainment system back, and they also want that crummy remote. Handling people and cargo is key to any minivan. The Sienna here has up to 33.3 cubic feet behind the third row. Fold that row down for up to 75.2 cubic feet behind the second row. It sounds pretty good, but this is actually significantly lower than the competition. The second row is on sliders, and both second and third rows accommodate full adults quite easily. I'm 6 foot 1, torso and legs proportionate, and I fit fine. The second row also gets dedicated climate controls, in addition to a nice selection of charging ports. Under the hood is a 2.5 liter Atkinson Cycle inline four cylinder engine with a pair of electric motors, one up front and another dedicated to power the rear wheels in back. Altogether, this system makes a peak 245 horsepower. EPA rates economy at up to 36 miles to the gallon on the highway and 35 miles to the gallon in town making this the most economical hybrid minivan on the market. Okay. Whew, it's cold out today. So what do we got inside here? Well, lots of plastic. It's not exactly the nicest place to be. I mean, this feels like a family car, you know? It's, it doesn't feel luxury at all. Uh, I think the one high spot is actually the steering wheel, which is wrapped and has contrast stitching it actually looks really nice gauge cluster pretty much standard fare for the hybrid toyotas you get an eco power charge gauge on the left speedo on the right and a multi-function color in the middle over here we have their old infotainment system that compared to their new one which is starting to roll out in new vehicles it's bad it's just flat out bad now it does include navigation which is nice and it supports xm satellite radio you also get a backup camera which eh, it's pretty low res it does support apple carplay and android auto but it does require a cable and the plug position is right up here next to the charging pad which is kind of a weird place to put it plug it in and we should get apple carplay and i don't mind this size of display but in a vehicle like this that costs fifty thousand dollars i expect at least a widescreen this is kind of what i had in uh, my old forerunner it's just slightly bigger this is a nine inch the forerunner was an eight inch uh, but as we know that system was archaic but thank goodness we can at least run carplay down here we get some drive modes, sport and eco, whatever. There's an EV mode, but this really isn't designed to drive as an EV. There's no PHEV version of this vehicle. I think a plug-in electric hybrid would be awesome, but they don't make one yet. 
Down here we get extra cup holders. We actually get four cup holders right here, which is nice. Extra storage down below. We get a big storage bin there, which has both USB-C and USB plugs and a uh, small sunroof. The stereo here has been upgraded with JBL sound, which is a nice touch. We also get collision mitigation, blind spot warning, as well as adaptive cruise control with lane detection. So today we're going on a pretty mild adventure because this is a van with 6.9 inches of ground clearance and standard all season radials. What are we really gonna do, right? Well, we will go up into one of the foothills of the Olympic mountain range and see what kind of a view we can get. It's kind of like a pretty standard forest road adventure. Uh, it's not gonna be too hard, but I think it's gonna be right up the alley for somebody who might consider this woodland sienna. I've now been driving for 45 miles, a little bit more than an hour, and my MPGs as rated by the computer are 33.7, which is right in there with what the EPA suggests. Now, of course, the EPA test is level surface, one speed. I've been accelerating, decelerating, there's been hills. So as far as real world numbers go, this is pretty good. Driving comfort, yeah, it's pretty comfortable. I got plenty of adjustments. I also get three stages of heat, which is nice on a cold day like today. This vehicle does come standard with adaptive cruise control. I can just turn it on here, hit the button, set my speed. And not only will it detect the vehicle in front of me, it will also detect the lanes and center in the lanes. We can see that right here on this little straightish stretch. Now, granted, this isn't designed for, um, you know, super twisty roads. This is really just for highways and freeways, and it does a good job of keeping me centered and in the lane. And if a vehicle is in front of me, it'll match their pace up into their speed. Overall, pretty good road trip vehicle, but I would expect no less. That's what minivans are for, right? Long haul, daily driving the kids, going out for the weekend, adventuring into far-flung distances. That is what the minivan is all about. Okay, that or going to soccer practice on the weekends, going down and just sitting and watching your kid play in sub-freezing temperatures. I've already done a complete review of this new generation of Sienna a few years ago, and I like it. This is a nice van, but the competition is extremely fierce in this space. I mean, you have Honda with their Odyssey, and I love the Honda Odyssey infotainment system, especially the way they set up that second row with streaming video. I just think that is so cool. And then, of course, Chrysler. Now, they didn't do their own custom system. They just called up Amazon and said, yo, send me a couple fire sticks and a couple screens. And that's what you get in the second row. But that is a nice setup. It works really well. Now, the Kia Carnival, I have not driven yet, so I have no opinion about that. But it does look pretty good on paper. All three of those, very tough challengers to the Sienna. And the Sienna is definitely feeling its age. I mean, the quality of the materials here, this is kind of like, you know, Toyota from a few years ago. The latest Toyota vehicles have really upped their quality game in terms of touch and feel and in terms of electronics. This thing is just, I hate to say it, but it feels dated. That said, it does drive very nice. Bigger is not always better. And this to me is big enough. I don't need something larger than this. And if you do need something bigger than this, well, Toyota would love to sell you a Grand Highlander, which we have a first drive on already, but we'll do a second review on in the coming weeks here. That of course is not only larger, it's also more powerful and it looks like an SUV, which is more appealing than a minivan because some people, even to this day, say no to the minivan. But I think people should embrace this. As a video producer, I fly all over the country filming, and one of the first things that we almost always pick up on any shoot is a rental minivan, because these things are the Swiss Army knives of video production. You can shoot out the back, you can shoot out the sides. In fact, I don't know what would happen to modern video production if the van were to go away. 
So today's adventure is a mild one. I am going into the foothills of the Olympic Mountains where I'm gonna just basically take this up a gravel road. We'll find a nice viewpoint and call it like it is. But there won't be any like rock crawling. There won't be anything extreme because let's look at this honestly. This is a van and even though it is the woodland edition of the Sienna, it is not for off-roading. I mean, they didn't even bother to put mild all-terrain tires on this thing. One thing I'm excited to try out on this vehicle is the gravel roads with this all-wheel drive. This is, of course, using Toyota's hybrid drive system, and this uses a electric motor in the back that's around 80 pound-feet of torque, and it's combined with a front motor, which I think is 199 pound-feet of torque, and those all together work with a gas engine that produces around 250 horsepower. They don't give a torque number, so don't know what that is. but Altogether, it should make for a compelling all-wheel drive option. Now, if you go full throttle with this thing, it doesn't sound great, but it does have enough get up and go for everyday driving. There's no paddle shifters. I can manually gate the ECVT if I want, and that does a decent job, but other than towing or hill descent, I don't really know why you'd wanna do that, and it emulates a six-speed Right, time to turn off the highway and into the mountains. Come on, climb. This thing doesn't sound great when you really put the throttle down. Yeah, it's not great. It sounds like it's really riding the struggle bus, but you know, it is fast enough. I mean, the electrics do kick in and they do give you, you know, the power you need to pass or accelerate or whatever. It's just, this thing just doesn't feel fast compared to the competition. So if you want a vehicle that actually feels fast, yeah, this is not the one to option. But it handles relatively good, especially on these twisty roads. And you know, it doesn't look bad. The suspension here is actually doing a really good job of soaking up the irregularities of this gravel road. One thing I really like about this Woodland Edition is it comes standard with 18-inch wheels. None of this 21-inch wheel ridiculousness. With these, we have enough sidewall to really soak up a lot of the irregularities of the road, and if we hit a pothole a little too hard, I'm not too worried about getting a puncture. Um, 21s just aren't made for conditions like these. Yeah, let's try a stop and full acceleration and see what this all-wheel drive system does. Uh, actually, let's turn off traction control too. Really see what this thing can do. Three, two, one, drop it. Oh, yeah! <laughs> okay, this is way more fun with traction control off. And I do feel power going to the back, which is nice. Sometimes these all-wheel drive systems, especially on vehicles like this, just aren't designed to have any level of performance. But this one, I could actually feel it hooking up a little in the back there. Yeah. And now we're starting to climb up the mountain. Now, there's no actual trail modes here. Uh, all I pretty much have is the option to turn on or off my traction control or to make my throttle a little bit more aggressive thanks to uh, the drive mode selector over here. But other than that, yeah, this really doesn't have a lot going on. But still, the standard tuning actually feels pretty comfortable. I feel pretty confident actually on this gravel road. Uh, obviously, gravel's not a big complicated issue, uh, but you know, there, there is a sheer drop over there and the added confidence of the power going to those rear wheels, it is nice. So this uh, spiral top view is uh, a place I've taken several other vehicles. There are some little areas to test the all wheel drive system. I don't know what we'll be able to do with this thing though, because it does have a 120.5 inch long wheelbase and that's pretty typical of a van. At the very least, we'll have a lovely drive and a fantastic view at the end. Got lots of downed trees here from earlier. If we run across a tree, I do have chainsaw with me today. It's through it in the back because it's a van. I got tons of room back there. Turn on to the spiral and let's see what we got here. 
man, the suspension on this thing actually is really nice for this. I feel like I'm getting a little bit of bounce, but it's just soaking up this road, no problem. Totally comfortable here. Steep climb. Would like to tell you how steep it is, but no inclinometer on this thing. We just go up, up, up. Up we go. Scrabble up that hill. Now, could we do this in a front wheel drive van? Yeah, but I will take the extra confidence of all wheel drive. Thank you very much. Those rear wheels are definitely doing their job back there. Beautiful view today. It's foggy in the valley. Obviously, we're above the fog right now. I wonder if we can see the mountain. Ah, there's Mount Rainier. Awesome. Climb to the top. Come on, you can do it. It's actually not even struggling. We're doing just fine here. So here we are coming up to the peak. Let's see if we can make the steep climb up for the spectacular view. And that's a fairly steep climb, although I'm more concerned about approach and departure angles here. Can we get that? Oh yeah, there's some power going to the back. Yes! Come on, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it! All the way up, and it's easy. So that's our look at the 2023-2024 Toyota Sienna. I think as a Woodland package, it really needs to have even mild all-terrain tires on it. These Bridgestones, yeah, they were fine today, but I definitely won't want to do any more. If you are looking for something with more advanced tech uh, and is slightly larger, take a look at the Honda Odyssey. Also consider the Chrysler Pacifica, which is available both in a hybrid and a plug-in electric hybrid, which is pretty cool. However, if you just need a van to throw the kids in and you want the best economy, the Toyota Sienna is still the best choice. And the fact that it has available hybrid all-wheel drive, well, that's just an extra bonus. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. Make them few. Hope you enjoy them.